I want to do one more example with you. This is example number two. It says an electron is released in the electric field moving at a speed of 5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second in the direction of the field. Determine the potential difference required to stop the electron. This electron is slowing down. Now, we know that because of two reasons. One, because it says, what's the potential difference required to stop the electron? It must be slowing down if we're going to stop it, right? The other way to look at this is to say that the electric field is, the electric field is a certain direction. The charged particle is moving in the direction of the field. If I've got a charged particle moving to the right, which way is the force on that? It's a negative particle. Which way is the force when the field is to the right? It's opposite, right? It's, it's to the left. If, it's, if a particle is moving in the direction of the field and the force is in the opposite direction, then it must be slowing down. So it is slowing down. We're going to treat that as a car going down, sorry, going up a hill. What kind of energy? Picture this car, this red burning car, no driver, no passengers, no, no insurance. Picture this car at the bottom of the hill. It's got to be moving, right? If it isn't moving, it's not going to go up the hill. So what kind of energy does it have at the bottom of the hill? What kind does it have at the bottom of the hill if it's moving? Does it have potential energy at the bottom of the hill? Does it have kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill? It's, it's moving at the bottom of the hill, right? So it has kinetic energy, right? So we're going to say 1 half mvi squared equals no, no potential energy at the bottom of the hill. This car, let's assume it's just coasting. It's out of gas, coasting up the hill. It has no potential at the bottom of the hill. Now, what kind does it have as it goes up the hill? Well, the potential energy increases as a result of the kinetic energy decreasing, right? Well, at some point, when it stops, its kinetic energy is zero. Picture it now. This car may not have made it all the way up the hill, but picture it. It stops partway up the hill. And then maybe it turns around and comes back down, right? But whatever, that's for another problem. It stops partway up the hill. What kind of energy does it have that moment that it stopped partway up the hill? Does it have kinetic energy at that point? No. Grace, does it have potential energy at that point? Yep, but it's not MGH potential, right? It's QV potential. Not QE, that would be force. QV, which is energy. So we're going to say one half of the mass here. The mass of the electron is 9.01 times VI is 5 times 10 to the 6 equals the charge of the electron. We drop the sign of the charge. times Vf. So multiply the numbers on the left side and then divide it by 1.6. We get a final potential of 71.2 volts. So it's like this car going up the hill, when it reaches its max height before it stops and begins to come back down the hill, its final height would be 71.2 uh, meters, which is analogous to this, right? Make sense? Now I'd like you to take a look at uh, the same worksheet you were working on, worksheet number nine. Skip a couple questions. Five and six don't worry about. Just go straight to question seven. Question seven is in two parts. We get the same setup for both of them. But in question A, we want to find out how fast the electron is moving if it's moving from negative to positive. And in question B, we want to find out how fast it's moving if it's moving from positive to negative. So do both of those questions, please, okay? Determine first in question A and in question B, is it speeding up or slowing down? And then if it's speeding up, treat it like a car going down. If it's slowing down, treat it like a car going up. Okay. Look, guys, in question A, it says, how fast is the electron moving when it reaches the second plate if it's moving from negative to positive plate? Let's draw a little picture here, okay? Here's my two parallel plates in this question, we've got a positive plate, we've got a negative plate, and the electron is moving at a speed of 6 times 10 to the 6. It's moving from negative to positive. So here's my negative particle moving this way from negative to positive. The electric field is from positive to negative. If it's, which way is the force? Which way is the force on this negative particle, with the field or against the field? Against the field, right? If it's moving to the left, and there's a force to the left, is it going to speed up or slow down? 
if it's moving to the left and there's a force to the left, it's going to speed up. So we're going to say in that question, question A, EI is equal to EF, it's going to speed up. So we know that we have potential energy. This is like a car going down the hill, right? We have potential energy. But it also starts with a certain speed. So we've got kinetic energy at the beginning as well. This is the car at the top of the hill. Now, at the bottom of the hill, it's got just kinetic energy, one-half MVF squared. And that's what we're looking for, right? How fast it's moving after it speeds up. Now, in the second question, the green one, question B, Here's the positive plate. Here's the negative plate. Here's the electric field going away from the positive toward the negative. The, uh, the uh, situation in the second question, the electron is moving from the positive plate to the negative plate. So it's moving to the right. Which way is the force on the electron? Good? To the left. Okay. If it's moving to the right, but there's a force on the left, which way is it going to speed up or slow down? slow down. It's like something sliding along the surface to the right, but there's a force of friction to the left. It's going to slow down. So in that case, it's like a car going up the hill. We'd say that it starts off with kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared, and it finishes off with um, it finishes off with, well, potential energy because we've got a conversion of kinetic to potential energy there. But it also finishes off with kinetic energy. I mean, it must still be moving. Otherwise, the question wouldn't have asked, what's the final speed? So in both cases, you're looking for final speed. And now it's just a math question. We have sub in your numbers and solve. The answer for, for A works out to be 6.56 times 10 to the 6. Which makes sense, right? We started off at 6 times 10 to the 6. Now we get 6.56. We, we sped up. We thought we were going to speed up. We did. In the second question, we get a value of 5.38 times 10 to the 6, which makes sense. We started off at 6 times 10 to the 6. We thought we were going to slow down. We did. We're at 5.38 times 10 to the 6. I want to have a look at uh, practice question set number 13 now. It wasn't homework. I just want to do... Uh, one or two of these questions as a group in class here. Love this first question. Have a look up here, everyone. It says, two oppositely charged parallel plates are separated by 0 0.20 meters and have an electric potential difference of 1,200 volts across them. Locations well, 1 and 2 are in the regions between the plates, as shown below. So this, this scenario makes sense, right? Here's a potential difference of 1,200 volts across these plates. There's a distance between the plates of 1.2 times 10 to the 3. You can imagine how easy it might be to find the electric field between these plates. Here, we'll see what we're looking for here. So how much work is required to move an electron from location 1 to location 2? Work is actually a physics 20 principle. Remember in physics 20, we did, we did two things in the context of work. One, we said work was equal to delta E, the change in energy. Remember that? That's the work energy theorem. That's principle three at the back of the room there, right after, right after uniform circular motion. The work energy theorem, W is equal to delta E. Now, the other, the other thing that we said work was in physics 20 was F times D. Remember that? No? I don't know if you remember, those of you who remember that work is equal to F times D. Sometimes we stuck cos theta on the end of it. F times D times cos theta. Remember that? Cos theta wasn't always necessary. If F and D were in the same direction, you didn't need the cos theta on the end of it. If F was this way and the displacement was this way, then you needed the cos theta on the end of it. What the cos theta did was find for us the component of the force that was parallel to the displacement. The component of the force that was parallel to the displacement. In other words, if you're using F times D, force and displacement need to be parallel to each other. Does that make sense? Cos theta did that for us. If they weren't parallel, we had an angle between the way that it moved and the way that it was pushed, then cos theta found the parallel component of, of F. In other words, it found the X component of F so that it would be in the same direction as the displacement. 
we're not, we don't need to do that here. We don't need to add the cosate on here. We're just going to stick with the F times D. In fact, there's two different ways we can do it, the green way and the, and the blue way. We'll do it the green way first, and then we'll go back and solve it the blue way. We don't know the force. Okay, we don't know the force here, but we can find it. The force comes from the experiencer equation. It's Q times E. Be careful. Not QV. That's energy. QE is force. If we multiply the charge of this electron by the electric field strength, then we get the force, and then we can sub it in and multiply it by the displacement. But uh, we don't know the electric field strength either. So let's, let's find the electric field strength. The electric field strength between these two parallel plates is delta V over delta D. Now, the, the potential difference is 1,200 volts. What's the distance that we use here? Is it 0.2? Is it 0.16? Is it 0.06? Or is it some kind of combination of, of those? Remember, the, the uniform field producer equation, which is what we're using right now, does not depend on the experiencer. It doesn't matter where it is, where it was, or how far it's gone. It depends on the distance between the plates. So what we're going to use here is 0 0.20 meters. When we divide 1,200 by 0 0.20 meters, we end up getting... Uh, 6,000 volts per meter, or we could say 6,000 newtons per coulomb for the electric field, which we're going to turn around and sub in to this equation, multiplied by the charge of the electron. And we're going to get an electric force here of 9.6 times 10 to the negative 16 newtons, which we're now going to multiply by the displacement. 9.6 times 10 to the negative 16 newtons. Is this making sense? It's kind of a tricky question, right? Oh, just wait. Just wait. The hardest part is you have to come. You think you're there or not? What's the displacement? Is it 0.2? How many people think the displacement that we use in here is 0.2? That was the distance between the plates. That's not how far the electron has moved, right? It's not 0.2. Okay, how many people think the displacement is 0 0.16? 0 0.16. How about 0 0.06? How about the square root of 0.16 plus the square root of uh, 0.16 squared plus 0 0.06 squared? In other words, the hypotenuse there. How many people think that's the displacement that we use? The displacement that we use here is 0 0.16 meters. Why? It is not the hypotenuse. This 0 0.06 is completely 100% irrelevant to this question. It's in there to see if you can figure out this one little thing. Yep. Well, it was, it was moving in a certain direction when it came in, yeah. The plates will never cause it to move horizontally because the force is either up or down, right? The force is either with the field or against the field. It's either up or down. It's from one plate to the other plate. If the force, in this case, we've got a, an electron moving from location one to location two, the force on it acts this way, from the top plate toward the bottom plate. I mean, it, you can't get a diagonal force here. It has to be up or down. In this case, it's down because it's, we know that because it's moving down. Well, if the force is downward, can we say just a few minutes ago and in physics 20 that the displacement has to be in the same direction as the force? If the force is downward, we need the downward displacement as well, the 0 0.16 meters. When we multiply uh, 9.6 times 10 to the negative 16 by 0 0.16, we end up getting 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16 joules. Now, somebody in the last class said, couldn't we use that displacement right here? Couldn't we use that displacement right here? Well, you could use that displacement right there. If you took these numbers, I don't know what that uh, displacement is. I didn't figure it out because it's not the best way to do it. But if you did that and found the angle 
and then said work is not equal to F times D, but now we have to say that work is equal to F times D times cos theta. Okay, if you used um, this force, 9.6, and this displacement, then it would be force times displacement times cosine theta. It's easier to just do it the way we did it because we were already given the displacement in, the, in that direction. Does that make sense? Force and displacement need to be in the same direction. What about the other way of doing it? Work is equal to delta E. Well, the change in energy is potential, change in potential energy here, let's say is Q times delta V. The charge here is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. What's delta V? 1,200 volts? Nope. Why is it not 1,200 volts? This electron never went from one plate to the other. This electron went, well, vertically, 0.16 meters. So it went 80% of a distance. It went 0.16 of 0.2 meters. Make sense? It went 80% of a distance. Therefore, it went 80% of the potential difference. It went 960 volts, not 1,200 volts. 960 is 80% of 1,200. Guess what we get when we multiply those two numbers together? Take a guess. 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16. So two seemingly completely different ways of solving this question, they're both legitimate. So go figure, we get the same answer in both cases. The answer for that one ends up being B as a result of either the blue way or the green way.